What's good everybody? This is John J Gaming on the Mind Cure, coming at you with a brand new episode of the Realignment Dynasty here on NCAA 14 featuring that college football revamp of course and we are out here man final regular season game man i am super excited about this episode for sure man as we jump right into it we are taking on the winless roadrunners of utsa they are down bad right now they are currently sitting at 0 and 11 right now overall they are still looking for their first win of the year we're on the opposite end of that spectrum of course we are 10 and 1 overall 7 and 1 in conference action and we are definitely in the hunt for that college football playoff as well so we corso is going to be rocking with us here man but we cannot take these teams for granted that's for sure because you know we already lost one game this year and even though it is to michigan and even though they are also in the running to make it to the college football playoff one more loss for us either between now or in the conference championship game if that's in the cards for us that could end our college football hopes and dreams right so we got to make sure that we come with it here man and it's a big deal for us especially because andrew gray was actually part of this utsa squad he transferred here from utsa and now gets to go up against them you know he takes on his old team having transferred from utsa so that's wild i'm sure the roadrunners would love to have a quarterback like him man so gonna be a fun episode man if we end up blowing the doors off of them man we're gonna go ahead uh we'll take a look around the league and see what's happening but you know let's make sure that we take care of business first and foremost i'll catch you guys on the field getting ready to go to work let's see if we can make it happen here man against the roadrunners of utsa let's get it all right boys so let's go ahead and get senior day officially underway in an east lansing fa fashion we got another snow game we we've been getting a ton of snow this year and oh second play of the game we almost intercept sean washington oh we gotta make that play big fella but it is gonna be third and eight coming up here now we'll see if we can get them off the field early as washington is that gonna throw to the left hand side and they give him the first down here that's wild to me i can't believe that they actually allowed that to be a first down that's crazy to me and we allow utsa's offense to remain on the field and they might make us pay for it here because utsa they they may have a glorified fcs team at least in ncaa 14 standards but man they are giving us a fight to not forget about at least on this first drive as we will force jamal dorsey out of bounds and don't look now but utsa they got them keys out and they are certainly on a drive right now as washington throwing it to the right hand side gets it out to john leslie and john leslie picks up a gain of 17 so now deep in spartan territory we need some pressure from our defensive line we're not getting it but this snow making it difficult to catch some passes clearly because we've seen some drops Really from both sides, just on this initial drive. And it's going to be third and 13 as Washington faces some pressure. Has to get it out earlier than he wants to. And John Leslie cannot reach the sticks. So UTSA, they do end up getting a field goal out of that. So now our offense comes out onto the field. Second, first drive of the game for uh, Michigan State Spartans as... Our first pass play ends up being deflected away. You hate to see it. So third and eight, not really want, where I wanted to be to start this game, but that's where we currently are as they send the blitz, but we find Leslie Johnson for a gain of 20. UTS save. They're going to try to mimic what North Texas did, provide those complex looks and make us really work for it in the passing game and frustrating us a little bit early, honestly. We give up. We have yet another incompletion. We are off schedule. No one was really open, to be honest with you guys. So now it's third down once again. We already converted one first down. Can we get a second? Gray looking over the middle. Going to get it out to Leslie Johnson. But Leslie Johnson can't reach the sticks. It's no good. But we do end up at least pinning them deep in their own territory. So we'll see if we can get some kind of safety here as Dorsey, he tries to bounce it to the outside and runs into a gang of defenders. 
So we get what we want. We get the safety. And we'll get the ball as well. Really not sure why they decided to go with an outside run inside their own five yard line but we're not complaining because we do end up benefiting directly from it but now let's see if our offense can you know take advantage of the great field position third down we did not convert the last third down conversion but we should here as Corey ross comes down with the catch and that gets him into utsa territory first down spartans and now we'll see if this offense can find a rhythm here. Gray looking right. Going to get it out to Mike Anderson. And Mike Anderson's going to pick up a gain of 14. So here we go now. Another passing down for the Spartans. As we look to the right-hand side. This time it's Aaron Ford that's going to come down and make the catch. That's a 14-yard reception for our senior tight end. And it sets up a goal line chance. Gray looks over the middle. Delson says, can he get in the end zone? No. But it's going to be down at the one yard line. And we'll see if we can punch it in. As we just need that final yard. Should be able to push this defensive line around. And sure enough, we do. We get an open space for Nelson Sisk. And it's going to be a touchdown for the Spartans. We pull early. Taking the lead, hopefully, for the remainder of this first quarter. But we'll see what this offense can do for UTSA. They did get a field goal uh, on one of their last couple of drives when they were not pinned insanely deep. So we'll see if we can get them off the field here and get them off the field quickly. Washington looking on second down. Gets it out to the left-hand side to Allen. And Allen was all by himself on that deep curl. And nearly picking up the first down there too. So instead of it being third and long, they just need one singular yard. It really opens up that playbook. We'll see what they decide to do here on this third down play. It's a running play to the right-hand side. We do play it really well. But UTSA, they get the yards that they need. That is actually going to put an end to this first quarter. We still have an early lead, but not necessarily playing up to our potential in this game. So we'll see if we can play a little bit better here in the second quarter as we do get him to yet another third and long. We'll see if Washington can make another play. Trying to attack on third and long. And oh my, did that receiver get pulverized. That was Harvey that absolutely lit him up like a Christmas tree. And they were forced to punt the football away. So here we go. First and 10 coming up. Trying to throw over in the middle of the field. And that was a bad read. And Austin Williams almost made us pay for it. Thankful we still have the football right now. As now. Second and 10 coming. Cutting it back inside. It's Andrew Gray. Andrew Gray actually picking up some good yards on the ground. He had that really nice run against uh, North Texas in the last episode. And he gets a nice little run there as well. Makes it third and short. Makes the running game looks like more available as Sisk gets the push that he needs from his offensive line. And that's a five-yard rush for our senior tailback. Is now third and five. Once again, yet another third down conversion that's required from us. They leave the, the check down wide but naked open for us. And that's going to be yet another first down. Next up, second and seven coming. Gray drops back. He's looking. Going to try to throw it over the middle of the field. And it's Aaron Ford who comes down with the catch there as well. Get them keys out. We got to drive as we got another red zone opportunity. Looking to Ford again. He makes the catch. They are not doing a great job of covering that middle of the field. And it was nearly a first down. We don't quite get there, but shouldn't take much for us to finish this drive. Third and inches. Going with the free wide to the left. Gray scrambles right. He's actually going to try to run for the end zone. He just, he goes out of bounds. But at least it's a first down. Not the touchdown that we were looking for. So as a couple of plays later, going to try to possibly get into the end zone. And sure enough, we do. Touchdown, Spartans. Two score lead here as we start to exhibit our will on UTSA. This is what we need to do. Type, those types of plays, types of drives, 
when you're trying to make it to the college football playoff, man. It's what was required to happen. And right now we're doing, you know, a little bit better here. But Washington is able to get loose there on the run. We give up a 30-yard rush to the quarterback. You hate to see it. But their starting quarterback does end up getting hurt. So their backup comes into the game. And I don't know how, but, you know, backup comes in, throws off his back foot, and still able to deliver a decent pass. Like, explain that to me, right? But Davis, he's going to go ahead, throw it to the right-hand side. And Allen almost makes a great pass. Danny Davis needs him to make that play, especially when your backup is throwing dots like that. Like, you got to help your, your quarterback out a little bit. And that's probably why they're winless, because they can't make those kinds of plays at time when they need to. But UTSA, to their credit, giving us a fight to, to not forget. Third and short. They decide to pass it here. Davis looks to the right, gets it out to Edwards. Is it a first down? They give it to him right at the marker, and they decide to move the sticks. Wow. UTSA giving us a challenge. As Danny Davis drops back again first. Actually, another third and long, but Alan Brown can't reach the six this time around. So we will force him to kick a field goal uh, after a full start penalty. Still should be a reasonable field goal. Just a 40-yarder, but it doinks off the upright, so it's no good. And UTSA, they do not come away with any points there. And now here comes our offense, and we... Oh my goodness, forced it in there when it wasn't 100% open. Andrew Gray simply trying to do too much as Freddie Towns is going to get this interception here. Not what we were looking for. So now here comes our defense. This time put in a tough bind as Washington does come back in the game. He was a little shaken up there initially, but he does return and he's looking to return with a vengeance is now first and goal from the about the seven yard line washington dropping back looks at the left inside it's intercepted it's intercepted by mike scott scott all of this open space in the world is anybody going to catch him no and mama there goes that man touchdown spartans this crowd absolutely electric here on a snowy day as Mike Scott read the eyes of the quarterback. And once he got past his tailback right here, it was barbecue chicken as mama. There certainly goes that man right there. So that's going to make it a 20-point lead. And here's the thing. 13 seconds left to play in this first half. We could extend this thing even further. So we actually do try to attack downfield. Doesn't necessarily work out for us that way. Uh, but I'm not bad at that particular interception because we do at the very least. You know, we were trying to push the ball downfield and UTSA, frankly, they don't do anything with it. So we do carry it nicely into the halftime locker room. We are actually going to be up by 20 points at the half. So welcome half to the second half action here, man, as we... Yo, we finished that first half really strong. I mean, interception return for a touchdown. Always love seeing stuff like that. But now we'll get the ball to start the second half. Let's see if we can finish this game off. I do not want to have UTSA hanging around more than they need to. So let's see if we can finish this quick, get some backups in, and make sure that we are truly well rested for what's going to be in a crucial run of games. You know, because we, we might have to deal with a conference championship, right? You know, it's not going to be just, you know, win this game and we're in. Like, we got bigger fish to fry. So, yeah, that, like I said, you know, let's try to get it, you know, to an unmanageable margin. Get it out of control. And then we can get them backups in. Move on to the next episode. How about that catch, by the way, by Wesley Johnson, by the way. Do I have to reach back and get it? I love that kid, man. True freshman. He's a stud. And speaking of studs, we'll see if we can go to him again. He's, he does have a step, but we don't see him in time. We had to throw the football away. And I thought we were outside that tackle box, but the refs do disagree here. So we do. This makes it second and 25. And this is what our offensive coordinator does call. Not a fan of this call. Uh, no one was really open except the running back. But 
We didn't see that running back in time either, so... Third and 35, not where I wanted to be. We've been great on third downs, but, you know, this is a big challenge, obviously. We'll see if we can just pick up some yards. Uh, not going to force it down the field necessarily at that point. So our drive did end because of penalties, essentially. But we do force that free and out, though. We at least got that going our way. So let's see if we can avoid the penalties. So we can add some points onto the board, man. Like I said, I'm trying to get up out of here. Like I said. So now, first and 10 coming up. We're going to run the football with Nelson 6. We've got some space up the middle of the field. And that is a gain of 7. Nelson 6 able to move the sticks a little bit. Is now second and three coming. Gray dropping back. Looking over the middle. He's going to throw it downfield. It gets to Aaron Ford. And Aaron Ford picks up. A gain of 14. Nice throw. Way to deliver it. And now we're going to really challenge this UTSA secondary. First and 10. But it's actually pretty well covered. They were playing man-to-man. -man. They had the perfect call against those four verts. So now, second and 10 coming up. We're going to run it with the halfback counter on the right-hand side. Nelson Sisk nearly reaching the first down marker. A very manageable third down. That's why I've been so good. Seven for nine on third down conversions. We'll see if we can add on to that as we try to run for the last couple of yards. It's our fullback, Anthony Thompson, that enters the game and does his job as to power back, powering forward for a first down. As we got another first and 10, a fresh set of downs. We throw over in the middle. Aaron Ford gets it inside that five yard line. Aaron Ford having himself a great day today, but he gets subbed out for Mike Holt. And Mike Holt makes some things happen, and it's a touchdown for the Spartans. That is our third string tight end that enters the game. And how about that? 30 to 3 advantage Spartans. So Nelson Sisk, we got a chance here to really run away with this game. Almost getting into a point. Honestly, if I end up scoring on this next drive, I think it might be a good time for us to go ahead and get ourselves up out of here. As now, Nelson six gain of six. Six with six. Kind of a little, we're trying to have a little fun here. <laughs> but third and four coming up. We'll see if we can pick up this first down once again. We've been really successful with that. As Gray looks over the right hand side, he finds Corey Ross again. Exposing the secondary. He hasn't put up really big stats necessarily, but he has been doing just a great job of, you know, helping move us to six. He's been critical on those third down conversions. That's why I've been doing so well with him so far. As we'll see if we go to Corey Ross. He's got one on one, but instead we go over the middle to Marcus Wiggins, who nearly runs his way into the end zone. Still sets up a goal line situation as a couple plays later. We do our job. We finish things up, and that is going to be barbecue chicken. I'm going to catch you guys at the end. All right, boys. So we do exactly what we planned on doing, man. Proved that we look like a double-digit win squad, man, as UTSA they are going to go winless here, man. And besides that field goal that they got on the first drive, they could not do a single thing about it, man. We win 43-3 to in this one. We got a couple of field goals with the backups, but not the best game from Andrew Gray, though. He still threw a couple of interceptions. That was, you know, pushing the ball downfield. And that was kind of taking UTSA not seriously. So, you know, we definitely need to work on the mental side of things a little bit as... We also kind of struggle running the football. I'm not going to lie. Um, less than four yards to carry. I'm not a huge fan of that. Uh, Sisk ends up with a touchdown, though. And then Andrew Gray does end up with a couple of touchdowns to go with it, too. So um, there, there's at least, you know, we found some ways to get into the end zone. Multiple different ways. Uh, Aaron Ford was an absolute star, though. Seven catches, 89 yards. He led the team in both catches and yards today. But it was the... Third string tight end, I believe, Mike Holt, who ends up actually finding the end zone for us, sitting behind both him and Barry Robinson. Uh, Holt ends up with two catches, 10 yards today, and then a nice shiny touchdown. Uh, didn't really call his name much this year, so 
feels really nice to see you know him getting a tad bit more involved in our offense as you know we're going to need some of that when um Aaron Ford does end up graduating but let me tell you this about Patrick Goshwin man he was all over the place today as the sophomore from Monroe Michigan ends up with 10 tackles and two TFLs go with it early Austin he also played up in the box as well quite a bit seven tackles TFL and a sack not to mention we got to this quarterback quite a few times today PJ Fortnite was able to get a sack same with Nathan Nelson and Bo Marshall and to put that little cherry on top Mike Scott who did have a few tackles as well he had the sole turnover that we had here today and took that thing all the way to the crib took that for 92 yards and then I guess Akeem Williams also ends up with a forced fumble as well didn't even notice that must have happened while we were uh, simulating the fourth quarter but yeah man I feel really good going into postseason action as we're going to finish 11 and 1. So since we did have a little bit less gameplay, you know, in that UTSA matchup, I did want to go ahead and take a quick look at a quick custom prospects update to see where some of your guys ended up signing in terms of that dotted line. Starting in the state of Alabama, Dexter Sanders, the number two running back in this entire recruiting class. He's leaving the state of Alabama, the number one player in the state. Choosing Georgia over in-state Auburn. So that's going to probably cause a little bit of animosity. But the Georgia Bulldogs are going to get a fantastic player here. From Demapolis, Alabama. 5'11", 208 pounds. Dude has some serious skills. And I can't wait to see what he can achieve on the football field. The Georgia Bulldogs might have the future at the running back position. Keeping it in the deep south, though, where we continue to show that Southern love. We go to the number one quarterback in high school football, and he has made his college decision. He is choosing the Clemson Tigers over the Michigan Wolverines. So kind of staying a little bit closer to home. It was a actually pretty intense recruiting battle, but Casey Carmichael, number one quarterback in this recruiting class, going to play for, Can for Clemson. Speaking of that quarterback position, no, another quarterback is planning on going to Clemson. It's Caleb Fisher. He is going to compete with Casey Carmichael in order to be, you know, someday being the starting quarterback for this Clemson program. He actually only had the one scholarship offer, and that was uh, for the Clemson Tigers. Nobody else did end up deciding to pursue for him. And then finally, in the state of Tennessee, we go to one of its top prospects, Richard Davis, the four-star from Union City. He has also decided to make his college decision known, and he is actually, he was in a recruiting battle quite a bit with the Cal Bears, but LSU was able to win out at the end of the day, and that is where Richard Davis is going to someday play his college football. So our 11-1 record, as well as 7-1 conference record, was more than good enough to make it to the conference championship game as we actually get to play host as the uh you know the team that had the best record in the great mid-eastern conference we actually will play host to the red hawks of miami who are in the top 16 right now number 16 in the country they actually do have a pretty solid squad but we got that home team on our backs man and i'm gonna be really excited as we are officially just one step away from making it to the college football playoff man so it's gonna be a fun episode here as we decide who wins that great mid-eastern championship and i hope you guys are really excited for it if you are make sure you go ahead smack that like button hit that subscribe button as well if you do happen to be brand new to the channel this is john j gave me on the mic signing off i'm hoping you're all out there having a good one take care everybody